this is an update video on my RPG toolkit pretty much starting with classes that I showed off before in a previous video I didn't talk about it I just showed the interface and showed how the modifications are going on pretty much in here you can have a given set of attributes right now it's set to eight within these attributes you can give them names and then set these in here and these attributes is what you can use to dynamically load in game um, as you set the attributes you can get your live feedback of these actual attributes in the table color coordinated so you can see exactly <coughs> excuse me what's going on with what attribute how it's going to scale and things like that these min and max numbers help curve this scale they're not a one-to-one -one ratio that when I go level 100 it's going to be at that number per se at the end because everything's being scaled off by a natural log given to a certain power none is supposed to be a linear effect <coughs> where I pretty much just take the min and max divided by 100 to give that stair-stepping effect to calculate the data all the way up from level 1 to level 100 assuming that you want 100 as your highest level right now I'm just keeping it simple not trying to add too much into the system let me cancel this load it back up um, but with this you can pretty much scale you can do tests to see how your attributes will scale over time so that way I can do simulations for a thousand battles to see how many hits it's going to take to kill the enemy, how many hits it'll take for the enemy to kill me, my crit damage, my average damage over time. And even with the simulations, if you keep hitting it, you're going to get different numbers. That's because the way I set up the battle, the battle system, the actual damage will fluctuate up and down based on a given percentage at random intervals that way it's not solid numbers all the time and with this you can actually judge your power creep so when you go from level one to level two you can see how that damage will differ going from you know one level to another which was the issue I had before and hopefully this irons out all of those issues that I had and just gives me a better effect and feel in the end so that way when I put it into the engine I can already tell that this should work these damages should work now how will I do the fighting how will my damage do this damage that I wanted to do to be able to take these numbers and know that a level one versus level one is 11 hits will kill it. How would these hits be executed? Will it be every time I slash or will it be part of combo hitting or things like that? I can tweak all this here and worry about it and not having to worry about it live when I'm actually in the engine. I um, spent, probably spent too much time on that one section, but that's an important section. And that was one thing I wanted to get right was the calculations. One more thing on the calculations. This is changeable. However you want to calculate your damage for your game, you can bring in your calculations, put them in your calculations table, program it how you want, take that same as that code, put it in Unreal, and keep your one-to-one -one ratio for everything. So that way, what you see is what you get. Um, stop saying um, first thing. All right, next for the actor. And the actor is using the classes to calculate your character stats with an offset of your initial stats for your character. So you can do all your tweaking here. I have character links, animation links, and dialogue links for your mesh, your skeletal meshes, your animation tree. I forgot what it's called. Animation sequence for your your skeletal mesh, your animation sequence, and your 
bitmap image for your character dialogue if that's something that you want. Um, you can also set up your starting equipment. It's going to dynamically update your simulation data. Anytime you select this, anytime you change a class, it'll switch everything over so you can go through and select the armor that you want for your start um, start off character. And you can see how they're going to do battle wise at the beginning of the fight. And you can also see, even though this not going to be, this won't be the same armor. You can test with other armor in here how that armor with that character can operate in a fight against any number of enemies that you've created in your list. In my items, I'm going to go over the item section and then I'm going to go over to the crafting after it. Um, pretty much, I have the effect percentage and effect value so you can deviate back and forth between or a mixture of those effects when making crafting I, I mean with when making healing items damage items or whatever kind of items you want for your game I have animation usage types which are just stubs for static animations that you may have that you share across different characters for just basic things from casting to healing animations to item usage animations and this is how this this list and all the other lists are customizable however you want use it how you fit remove what you want it's up to you um so item types i have hp mp life damage status elements i have um poison blind paralysis nullifications of said statuses as well as life or raise however you want to say it Different target types for you, the party, enemies, dead allies. Whether you want to use this item to to learn a special move or summon a monster or apply some kind of status boost for the actual item that's in here. Along with this is the resource list. The resource list is my attempt to make a dynamic crafting system. So pretty much if you're making an item, you want that item to be craftable. You can add resources to your resource list under a given resource type, add it to the list, and then add it to your crafting list. After you add it to your crafting list, you can double click or alt double click to go up and down in the quantity of the items and then just save that out for your item. So that way, if you have a list of items that you can craft for a given level range or however you want it. Speaking of level range, I probably should add that to here. I'm going to make a note of that for whatever level range that you want to be able to craft this item at. You can just take that and bring in the list of crafting items, bring up your list of items that's needed and craft an item based on the requirements and what you have in your inventory. Um, stop playing. Um, weapons are the same. I try to be as generic as possible with a lot of the settings for slashing, fire distance, effect radius, ammos, energy levels, all of that, just to have enough variety in here for settings that you may need for any different weapon type. You can set a list of weapon types in your database. You can also set what slot that item will go in and also link them to a specific class so a certain class can only use this item. Just like the other things, I have weapon icon links and static mesh links that you may want to load for a, given, um, for a given weapon, as well as attribute offsets for that weapon and, of course, the resource list for crafting. Armor is pretty much the same thing as the weapons, except for a smaller list of, you know, customizations. I couldn't think of anything really to add to this. As of current, maybe I can add special effects or something like that, you know, increased crit or things like that. But the way I have everything calculated, affecting my accuracy and evasion will affect my crit, so... 
have at it however you need it. As for the spells, my spells are my spell attributes. It's pretty much just power because as I'm using it right now, any spell derives from the overall damage that the player would normally do with an additional potency for 150% in this case. So I can change and tweak spells power just by changing that potency percentage. Same thing, well, another thing that I have as well is the spell type, it can be directly on an enemy, it can be a cone in front of you, I mean a line in front of you, a cone size, an AOE zone, an AOE from your actual self, or a projectile. All this would be logic that would be programmed into the system. So that way, it can work for many different spell types, many different effects. You can also do different targets, just like the items. You can target enemies, your player only, and things like that. And also, you know, use a spell to summon a beast or some other thing out to, you know, fight next to you for a given amount of time or until it dies, however you want to use that. As well as, as well as, you have your status bonuses, what classes can use it, status ailments, all that. Description, sis. Description is nice. Skills is pretty much the same thing, except for one thing I probably need to add to spells is the AI activation type. So if you give a given monster or AI the ability to operate as, to operate on its own, it can actually use the AI activation type as rules to use certain spells or use certain abilities or moves on a turn by turn AI thinking process every so every few seconds or instantly or at death you know behemoth meteor every time it dies animation type is in here as well as you know the skill link and as for as for animations and things like that, that can be used however you want, but it's still, these are generalized things that you can use to be able to help your development, or at least that's the goal. Summon, just like a actual character. Found the defect, lovely. I will fix that, I know what that one is. All right, in the summon, <coughs> you can come in here, same thing as, as the actor. You have your skeleton mesh, your animation mesh, your image, your offsetting stats, and then your simulation over here to go to battle your actual character against a given enemy to test to see how much power it has, if it's overpowered, if it's underpowered, et cetera, et cetera. Monsters similar to summon except for you have everything that you need to know about your monster from the drop rate the level skeletal mesh animation mesh attributes um, You can add monster races however you please assign those to there and My brain cut off You also have AI tactics the AI tactics is part of the AI that will tell how the enemy will operate in battle. You can do random attack, attack weak. You can have it cower away and defend itself. You can have it go after the mages or go after weak enemies. You know, just different types that I've been experimenting to try to bring some personality to the AI. As well as, you know, Every resource asset and things like that can actually drop off a monster. You can tell whether it's going to be a rare drop. And you have the simulator, which actually simulates 
the fight between a your monster and the base class, not the actual actor. The reason I did the actual class itself is because the armor changes, so you can't really have a proper scale of determining the damage you would do to an enemy because of the armor offset that you get, but you can still get a generalized formulation of an idea on how strong this monster will be, how much damage it's going to do to an enemy, and if you, if you need to tweak it, you can always just come in here, tweak the changes, save the database, load up the game, and have at it. Try to see if I can get through these last few. I'm running out of time on my recording. Monster groups are just pretty much used for spawn points for monsters on the map. It can be either from an event-driven event or an actual spawning point that can load these different monsters into your field given the monster ID. Um, also, you have the minimum and maximum number of monsters that's going to be spawned and the radius, all that good stuff. Also, the level offset for that, um, which can be random however you want to program it. Mine's just going to be random. As for the maps, this says monsters. That needs to say map. Okay. For the maps, not monsters, you can pretty much, the way I have it set up is a region is defined as the actual map that's loaded. So whatever you have your maps named will go into your region. That region will have a given set of areas. So like a forest, a town, blah, 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 whatever it may be called. And then the actual location of that, of that spawn point that the player will spawn at or that an event would trigger to take it from one place, one spawn point to another. Pretty much these will control your spawn points for the game. From the starting point of the game to zoning to a different map or, you know, teleporting yourself across town because of reasons. Also, there's a link back. So that way, if you have a teleport that you teleport to, if you walk back into that teleport, it'll take you back, assuming it will take you back to where you just came from. Or you could just be an evil developer and take him to another random place. Eh. My last part will probably be events. The events will it'll probably take me three weeks to finish it. But in the end, I'm hoping that the events will be used to create quests, create, create your event flows for your game, and pretty much the majority of your logic can be made from all these events, enabling other events, disabling events, playing movies, changing the time of day, whatever kind of setting that you want. Hopefully, it'll be good and I won't pull the rest of my hair out. Have a good day.